Good morning. It's Pastor Jeff Fairley with Faith and Grace Fellowship. Starting about a minute early to give people time to see us come online for on their Facebook feeds. If you're joining sometime other than this is July 24th, uh, 2022, then this was recorded live on that morning, Sunday morning service. If you watch this sometime other than this, just let me know. You can drop a note in here, a, a like, tell me that you were watching. If you're watching it live, thank you. I appreciate it. We've got a number of people from various locations that watch us live. Praise God. Our opening scripture comes from Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such, of such is the kingdom of heaven. There's nothing like getting to uh, hold your grandchild, give them a hug, talk to them, hear their view on things. It's, it's a beautiful thing because we as adults see things one way and the kids see it so differently. If we could see life as simple and as innocent as children do, there'd be a whole lot less problems in this world. So, praise God. As we go to the Lord in prayer, we're praying for a number of things. Number one, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 122.6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Jerusalem is called the apple of God's eye. It's not just the city, but it's the people, it's the nation. It's those who are worshiping him because Jerusalem was where the temple was, is where God's presence was. And God has a special place in his heart for that city. Not so, so much that Jerusalem in Hebrew is actually pronounced Jerusalem. And any time in Hebrew that you in the word in I'm, it's plural. And so in the in the Jewish mind and in the word, there's the concept that there are two Jerusalems. There's the earthly Jerusalem and the heavenly Jerusalem. I saw a picture of uh, uh, Aaron, Ariel Sharon's office when he was prime minister of Israel. And behind his desk up on the wall was this, what looked like a picture of the city of of Israel of Jerusalem, you know how you see the the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock, and everything. And up in the clouds was another city. And so, instead of being a, a picture, it was a painting, but it was showing the Jerusalem, the heavenly and the earthly Jerusalem, uh, and that's in the Jewish mindset. So, God's not only talking about that city but he's talking about all that serve him all that are Abraham's seed we also pray for workers for the harvest people to be sun minded to be more than just volunteers but really Christ minded Christ involved to help lead people and, and teach people how to read the word how to pray how to walk in their um, in their newness of life because we don't take a child and say, okay, you've been born here, now go get a job. They're still in diapers. They're still needing to be cared for and fed. And that's what discipleship is, is the caring for and feeding and growing of people to where they can stand on their own two feet and take over from where you are and do the same for others. And so many churches need that. So we're praying for that in the body of Christ. We also pray against the spiritual state of wickedness in this metro area. Where you live and where you reside, you have standing. You have legal standing. And so in Scripture, we bind, according to Matthew 16, according to Matthew 18, from this city, from this county. We're also citizens of this state, in multiple counties, from this federal region, which goes across Kansas and Missouri metro area, from this nation, we're a citizen of the United States, and we elect, we elect our government officials, so in our federal government. So we take our standing, spiritual standing, binding, according to Matthew 16 and 18, binding the uh, 
wickedness, spirit of wickedness in all these areas. And then the other part of that verse is that you, whatever you loose in heaven is loose, loosed from earth is loosed in heaven. So we pray for the Holy Spirit to move on hearts and lives and homes and communities and make changes of people. Give them a hunger for the things of God. So we pray for the loosing of the Holy Spirit in the hearts and lives. We pray for those that need jobs or need their, uh, maybe you're on retirement income or Social Security or pension, where you've got a, a salary job, you can't increase your hours to make more money. We're praying that God bless you to the point that your outgo is lessened and your income is increased, whichever way he wants to do it, so that you have a blessing. We have a number of people on our prayer requests. Uh, pray for my mom. She's got some surgeries coming this next week. Uh, pray for Rita Hoffman. She's still recuperating. She was getting around great last night with her walker. She's she's doing great. I mean, I, I told her last night, physical therapy would be more than pleased with the work you've been doing with your leg. Uh, Kathy, we've been praying for her. She's with us this morning. God has raised her up to where the things that were bothering her last week. Thank God she's over that. She still needs continued prayer because she's still going to the doctor for some things. That's okay. She's getting the help, but we're believing God's going to heal her on top of that. Pray for Keith Wilson's family, for Lisa and Bob Hunsell, Aunt Darlene, Aunt Jane. Continue to lift them up. For Donald Miller, he's... Uh, He's having more pneumonia. Is that what he's having? He's having pneumonia or something like that. Um, that was that little baby we prayed for last year that uh, had the, the heart issue and the vessel issue. He's been having some, some other issues, some complications, but the doctors expect things like that. So we're just praying that God continue to heal him. He's a miracle so far. Praying for some special and spoken requests. Praying for Rob and Rob Ballinger that God continue to heal them and lift them up. For my cousin Steve Rippy, cousin, you're in our prayers. My brother Mark Fairley, he's uh, Mark. I saw you on here. Praise God. I pray that God heal you and deliver you and raise you up. For Sam Crabtree, he's been going through some things uh, medically, and uh, this heat doesn't help because he got heat stroke or heat exhaustion last year and that will lead to heat stroke this year and he works in the kitchen so praying for you Sam so if you have any prayer requests that are according to the word of God we will agree with you you can call your prayer out while we're praying and if it's according to the word of God we add our agreement to you let us pray Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You ask us to, and we're being obedient to that. We pray for peace in the city, peace in the country, peace in the nation, peace across all of the people that are called by the name of Abraham. And Father, we pray for wherever they are, in our backyard cities, in Ukraine, in Russia, anywhere that there's people of uh, Jewish descent, we pray for their peace and safety. And we thank you, Lord. And we pray for all believers that they would stand with Israel during these times. And we give you the glory, Father. We pray for workers for the harvest, people to be taught, raised up, and instructed in how to parent other believers in Bible study and prayer and, and walking in the, in the word according to the word and their newness of life. We pray for instruction that people get raised up, the army of workers get raised up in this time. We bind against uh, the spirit of wickedness in this metro area. Father, according to Matthew 16 and Matthew 18, we bind the spirit of wickedness in this city, in this county, in this state, in this federal region, in our nation, and in our nation's government. We bind the enemy from doing things that you're not willing and ready for them to do that, Father, there's a hold back on all wickedness, that the church be the church and stand up in the place of righteousness and take our stand and take our place and stand up and say right is right and wrong is wrong. And, Father, I loose the Holy Spirit, the same verses Matthew six, in Matthew 16 and in Matthew 18, loosing the Holy Spirit into hearts and lives and homes, communities, 
if other people get hungry for the things of God, that Christians start acting like Christians and start showing forth the love of God, that people get hungry and saying, I have problems, but I want to be like these people. I want to, I want to, I see something that I need and it's in their lives. I just pray for the Holy Spirit to touch and reach people in their hearts and lives and homes as this message goes out and that other churches are sending their messages out online, that people would get saved and healed and delivered and set free. And we thank you, Father. We pray for those with limited income or needing jobs in uh, this area. We ask you to lead, guide, and direct. For those with a set income and their income is not meeting, meeting their outgo, I pray for a supernatural blessing on their lives to turn that around, that there's more money left at the end of the month than there is month at the end of money. And we give you the glory, Father. And all of these that we lifted up in prayer, Rita, Kathy, Keith Wilson, the Hunsels, Aunt Darlene, Aunt Jane, Donald Miller, Mom, Rob and Robin, Steve, Mark, Sam, and the special unspoken requests. Father, I just ask you to heal, deliver, set free, according to the Word of God, what their needs are. And for the special requests everyone's making on their heart now that wasn't called out here, if it's according to the word, I add my faith to their request, Father, and I agree with them that you are the supplier of all of our needs. You know what we have need of before we ever ask, and we're asking in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I went to go choose the, the offering scripture this week, and God led me to the same scripture, and I didn't realize it until I was getting ready to put the 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 slides together so God must really want us to hear this it's it's uh, it's almost like when he says verily verily or truly truly he's trying to get your attention when whenever in scripture you see it said twice it's look and listen so apparently this one is look and listen but if you want to give to support our church you can go to fgfellowship.org and you go to the giving tab and put your information in and go through tithely and then come straight to our bank account. We'll get notified only of the amount of money. Uh, Tithely does the, the merchant work and we don't get any of that information. So your, your information is safe with them. Our offering scripture is Hebrews 13, five. Don't love money. Be satisfied with it, what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you I will never abandon you. How many times have we felt like month after month, what am I going to do now? God says he will never fail you or abandon you. So we, he also tells us we don't have because we don't ask. So we've been asking for people to get blessed and their income to be increased. And so this is one way that God does it is through generous giving, through cheerful giving, God also gives more. If you don't have to give, we're not asking you to give. Enjoy the message. Enjoy the time. This is our gift to you. I thank God that we have some good tithers that have paid the message or paid the way for this church to do what it's supposed to do. So I want to pray over the gifts that have come in this week and how God has blessed. Father, I thank you for everything that you have purposed in your heart for this church to do and that you have provided those to pour into this ministry so that we can do those things. I pray for the gift that you bless it and you multiply it to all the things you've purposed in your heart for them to do. And I pray for the giver that you pour back into them in such measure that they cannot contain it according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, has it been hot enough for you? Golly. I don't even think that uh, if you walked outside to uh, try to crack an egg and fry it on the sidewalk, did you ever get that far? Because I think it would uh, poach right in the shell before you ever cracked it. It's been hot. If you had firecrackers in your pocket, they'd be going off just from the ambient heat. Well, I hope you stay cool. You stay in some place where you can stay out of the heat, stay out of the sun. And if you do go out and you want to enjoy everything out there, 
wear sunscreen, wear the right SPF. Having a tan is not worth what you have to have after that, years later. We lift up the word of God and make our confession. I confess and I declare that this is the word of God. God cannot lie. His word is truth. We accept it. We believe it. We receive it. We live according to grace by faith. The blood of Christ has redeemed us and set us free from sin, sickness, bondage, and separation from God. We are free because of Christ's substitute work on the cross. Get rid of something that's on the screen there. There we go. I was sitting and meditating on a scripture the other day. And what I mean by sitting and meditating on it is God brought it to mind. Then I looked it up, read the scripture, thought about it. And then I did a, a, a little word study within that one verse. And the more I was getting out of it, the deeper it seemed to get in what it was saying to me. And then I called another minister and we were talking. And we got to talking about it. And I guess we were on the phone for two hours talking about this and the depths of it. And it was, but by the time it was done, my, my head was, I felt like my hair had been pushed out of my head. It was, it, it was definitely something that I needed. And so I hope that I can deliver this in the same manner to you. But the message title today is Be Still. Psalm 46.10 in the New King James says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Let's pray over the, the scripture for this sermon. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you anoint me, anoint my lips, anoint my heart to deliver with kindness and with, with fervorance the message you've placed there. And I pray for people to have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to understand, whether they watch this live or whether they watch it as a recording, Father. I pray for your anointing to go into their hearts and lives and touch them, that they're able to mix the word of God with faith and it be profitable for them. In Jesus' name, amen. So I started looking at be still and know that I'm God. That kept ringing over in my mind. So then I looked it up and I, I opened up the scripture and I looked at it and it just kept resonating with me. So I decided to do the word study, as I mentioned. And the phrase, be still in English, is a word in Hebrew. The Old Testament's written in Hebrew, the New Testament's written in mainly Greek. But that phrase, be still, is the Hebrew word rafa and it means it's like if you had a rope you could hold it in both ends and it would be taut or it would be straight but if you let go of one end the rope unless it had wire in it that rope is just gonna hang down so it goes slack like a rope to let something drop to abandon it or in music to refrain there is a giving up that has to do with that be still too many times we think be still in this passage means like going into a quiet room I'm there I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna think and talk or listen or read or put some music on that's not being still that is being quiet in this phrase be still doesn't do it justice in English. A better word for it is surrender. A mental picture of this would be like in a movie when you see the heroes being chased and he gets to a point that he realizes that he is totally surrounded and the camera pans to him and he's standing there with his gun in his hand and he looks around and he sees all the different enemy around him and his arms just go limp and then the camera pans to his gun in his hand and his drops to the ground. And then the hero, still with his hands down, just 
plops down to his knees and is sitting there on his knees, total abjection, total surrender, arms down, waiting the fate of his captors. That is the picture of be still in the Hebrew word. It's you have no power, you have no effort, no ability to take care of this thing. You just need to totally surrender everything within you. Sorry, I've got to get my notes here. So this phrase, be still, signals a complete surrender of the person. Be still would be stop, surrender. And then we get into the next few words, and know. Know is an intimate knowledge a discernment to fully understand but it's interesting that that word in Hebrew is yada and yada is used in relation to husband and wife intimate relations it is that I am intimately knowing her it's a carnal knowledge but it's more than that um, many times people will in a cartoon when someone's talking along and just going, you know, babble, babble, babble. They'll, they'll say yada, 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 yada. Well, that's a Hebrew word, but it actually means something more than just blah. It means a total internal commitment. And when you break down the word yada, it's made by the word yod, letter yod, dalit, and uh, ayin. Yod means hand. Yod and Dalit, hand and door, hand on the door. That's what it means hand. And Ayin means I. And so knowledge has to do with the hand in action and the eye seeing. When I pick up the Bible, I use my hand. When I read the word, I use my eye. And so God asks for a personal intimate relationship with us, and it has to do with our what we can do and what we see, what we're bringing into ourselves, but also what we're giving out from ourselves. And there's a lot more than that because, like I said, we, we spent multitudes of hours talking about this. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, if you remember the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were in the garden. The serpent tricked Eve. She took and saw, she saw with her eye and she took with her hand of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. She used her hand and her eye to address what God had said don't do. And it was the knowledge of good and evil. And then verse 22 of chapter 3, it says, Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Now lest he put his hand out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. They were going to put the banish him and put the angels or the cherubim there. The God recognized man's sin had taken him to the point where if he ate of this other tree that had the, the tree of life and eternal life man would have lived forever in his sinful fallen state and all of us would have done the same there would have been no death and if no death there would have been no need for a savior or ability for a savior because Jesus couldn't have come and died because death would have been wiped out by eating of that tree and you start thinking about it and like we came this close to Adam and Eve walking over to the other one and eating of that tree and God not being able to redeem us. But it was the word, he's come, become like one of us to know good and evil. Again, that yada, to have intimate knowledge of good and evil. And so we, as a, as a entity of human beings, first fell when Adam and Eve fell but came close to being uh, doomed for eternity if they had eaten of that other fruit. It's, this is where we really got to, to 
picking this apart and getting into some of the scribes, the Hebrew scribes and, and rabbis. So we, we go from be still or surrender to know, to yada, to be intimate in our knowledge of this situation. And then it says that I am God. How many out there are fixers? <laughs> you see a problem and you latch onto it and you, you tackle it. I mean, we're taught to do that at work, to be forward thinking, to be motivated, to think outside the box. And don't, I don't even like to say things are a problem. I like to say they're an opportunity because you always have a choice. You can face the opportunity, you can run from it. You can uh, go this way in the opportunity or that way and, and fix what looks like a problem to somebody else. Well, sometimes we have to sit down and say, I can't fix it. I have to turn this over to God. And so God's saying a lot about be still. He's saying a lot about having that intimate knowledge, that discernment, that, that closeness in this situation, and then that he's God. Too often we try to take God's place in this and we try to figure it out in our feeble mind. Sometimes that's exactly how we got in the situation was we figured it out in our feeble mind. God said surrender and understand fully that I am God and not you. That's hard to do because we are, are doers. Another version of our translation puts the same verse this way. Surrender your anxiety. Be still and realize that I'm God. I'm God above all nations and I'm exalted throughout the whole earth. So when things are coming at you and you can't seem to figure it out, don't just go get in a, a quiet place and say, okay, I turned off all the lights, I shut all the doors, I'm here by myself. Now what, God? Get to a point of complete and utter total surrender on that situation. I can't do this. I'm, I can't do this. I give it to you, Father. I give it to you. Where, oh where, are you going to help me fix this? I know that I can't do this, and I know that you can if you will. That's hard to get to. Sometimes our pride gets in the way, and we, we get all bound up in, yeah, but I could go do this and do that. There's so much refreshing when we acknowledge that God's the only one that can take care of it. We couldn't take care of our sin. God sent his son, and it's only when we accept the fact that we are sinners and that only Jesus' blood on the cross, that he died for us, that he rose again, only that, that gift will give us restoration to being children of God. Only that gift will take care of the sin that stands between us and God that's on our record. So be still and know that I'm God works from salvation to any other issue and problem in our life. You might, you might ask, how bad did the psalmist have it that he needed to surrender? Well, the verses before that, verses 1 through 9, say, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we do not fear, even though the earth is removed. We don't fear even though the earth is gone. I mean, what are you going to do? Just float around in space? That's an ultimate fear. What happens if uh, the earth gets blown up? I know back after World War II, there was, oh my gosh, there'd be total annihilation if nuclear war broke out. The earth could be gone. What about us? And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and tremble, though the, and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. 
I see pictures of World War II. I'm not old enough to have been around then. I know my parents were. I see pictures and movies and, and films of it. And there were cities that were bombed flat, leveled. I mean, how they ever restored them and they looked the same or similar as they did then, I don't know. But he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. And he breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. And he burns the chariot in the fire. So this person, the psalmist was writing about total calamity. And in this total calamity, someone's world going totally upside down, inside out, and nothing left. That he said, be still. Surrender. Have a deep, intimate understanding that I'm God. That's a hard place to, to be quiet because in that cacophony of noise, we want to run, we want to hide, we want to make something happen. Amen. So God was responding to someone feeling this utter destruction and defeat. He gave hope in a few steps. One, stop and surrender. Two, understand that he's God he's in control he has a plan he can't work on your behalf when you're trying to control things and I hit the wrong button many times in life we find ourselves facing things that take us totally by surprise we run we fight we fix God says be still gently know that I'm God I got this it will be okay trust me sometimes we as individuals oh Joseph sometimes we as individuals make a mess of things because we thought we knew the right way God wants us to have a have peace he hears and understands, and he wants you to rely totally on him. In Isaiah 26, 4, we read, Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everything, everlasting strength. That word Yah is Yudhade, uh, part of Yudhade Bafe, but it's where we get Yahweh or Jehovah, and it's one of the, the titles for God, Yah. For in Yah, the Lord is everything for everlasting strength. But I want to give you a different uh, thing. I know my mom has, uh, mom, you have turtles that you step out. You only make progress when you stick your neck out. And it's been a very uh, lifelong sermon that you've lived that. But here's another one, frog. F-R-O-G. Fully rely on God. Kathy, you like that frog? If you fully rely on God, according to Isaiah 26, 4, you trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. I want to tell you a story about a student pilot. He was learning to fly. And this student pilot wrote this he said there's no situation I can get into that God cannot get me out of some years ago when I was learning to fly my instructor told me to put the plane into a steep and extended dive I was totally unprepared for what was about to happen after a brief time the engine stalled and the plane began to plunge out of control it soon became evident that the instructor was not going to help me at all after a few seconds, which seemed like eternity, my mind began to function again, and I quickly corrected the situation. And immediately I turned to the instructor and began to vent my fearful frustrations on him. He calmly said to me, there's no position you can get this airplane into that I can't control, get you out of. If you want to learn to fly, go back up and let's do it again. He said, at that moment, God seemed to be saying to me, remember this as you serve me. 
There's no situation you can get yourself into that I cannot get you out of. If you trust me, you will be all right. So be a frog. Fully rely on God. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Another verse on trust is, The God of my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of salvation, my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. Psalm 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Psalm 37, 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37, 40. And the Lord shall help him and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. There's about 189 times that the word trust is used in the New King James. When you do that, that's when you do the math on that's almost one verse for every other day of the year. God's trying to get our attention to say we need to trust him and we need to trust him a lot. Only when we trust him are we able to drop our arms, drop to our knees in total surrender. Then we can know he has our back. And then we can fully rely on him. 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Have you got problems that seem bigger than you? They're not bigger than God. Have you got problems that seem to overwhelm you? They keep coming at you and you can't find an answer? Get alone and surrender. And turn yourself over to God and say, God, I can't. I, I can't. But I have a deep understanding and knowing. I, I, I believe totally that you can. And I know that you're God in this situation. What do you want to do? If you want me to do something, let me know. But what do you want to do? How do you want to do this? You will find strength and direction and guidance, healing and rest in being able to do that. We have to do the same with our salvation. We have to stop striving after sin and stop chasing after all the self-help books of how to be better and realize that we have to rely on the free gift of Jesus Christ. What Jesus did on the cross for you and for me didn't cost us an ounce of sweat. We didn't shed one drop of blood. We didn't get whipped once like he got whipped 39 times. All he says is, will you accept my free gift? And that's be still and know that he's God. One of these days, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and that free gift he's given you, one of these days you're going to stand before him and he's going to say, why didn't you? Well, I thought I could do this. I thought I could do that. I thought I was good. I went to church. You can go check such and such church on such and such street. You can look in the roll book and you can see where I was in perfect attendance and I went through all the classes. I was in a position of authority there and I did this and I did that. And he said, what did you do with my son? And if you can't answer salvation, you can't answer that you asked him into your heart. All of the striving, as it's called, is chasing after the wind. You don't really have that that intimate knowledge of hand and eye, the knowing, the yada, that intimate knowing between you and God, that he's God and that he's got this. And until you do, you won't ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And someday it'll be too late. 
So I challenge you, if you're watching this, whether live or recorded, and you have not asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, I ask you to choose Jesus this morning. Choose to surrender, to drop your arms, to say, okay, I can't, I can't do this anymore. i got to turn it over to you, God. And he'll take care of it. I've read this scripture a lot, Romans chapter 10. It's how simple God made it. Jesus did all the work. He just asked us to believe and to confess. Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you haven't asked Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, I ask you to pray this prayer with me. I'm going to pause. I'm going to say a little bit and I'll pause to give you a chance to repeat what I said so I can guide you through the prayer. Kind of like walking side by side with you. Believe, if you believe this in your heart, not just in your mouth, not just saying I'm saying what the preacher said, but if you believe it in your heart, God will meet you right where you're at. Let's pray. Dear God, I realize I'm a sinner. I've been trying to do this all my own. I need to be still. I know that you raised Christ from the dead. I know that he died on the cross for me. And I give you my sin in re return, I receive the free gift of salvation. And I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, let me know. Contact me some way. You can see the address, email address above. You can see the, uh, you can put it right here. I prayed the prayer with you. Praise God. I'd love to celebrate with you. Amen. We're going to do the Aaronic Blessing. It is the High Priestly Blessing. See if I can get this to work this time. The High Priestly Blessing given by God to Moses, to Abraham. No, I mean to Aaron. not playing okay it's numbers chapter 6 verse 24 through 26 the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his face toward you and the Lord give you peace Shalom peace until next week this is pastor Jeff Fairley at faith and grace fellowship love you be still